Well, in today's news, one dead following East End shooting. And Flat Charles has another chance to be ratified at special VIP convention. Really says UK focus on reforms, not election results. And the BVI Football Association Women's Football Festival coming to VG and Tortola. But these are more stories when 284 News return. Catch Super Bowl 57 on CCT Live. Sign up today by calling 444-4444. Is someone going to get that? Hello. Hello. I, this guy, so nice of you to have clean up for us. Hi, baby. Hi. We're like in-laws that don't show up unannounced. Don't worry. I've got this. CG Insurance. Good like that. There are many ways to enjoy life, like so many ways to count on Popular. Whoa. Mm. Is that my lunch? Hmm? Is that my lunch? Mm mm. We're like the co-worker that doesn't eat your lunch. I'm John. I'm John. CG Insurance. Good like that. Well, welcome viewers to the Tuesday, February 7th edition of 284 News. I am Kamal Haynes, bringing you the latest out of the British Virgin Islands. While leading today's news on a very sad note, where the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force just confirms moments ago that yesterday's shooting incident victim is Jan Edwards, 42, of Long Luck. Well, according to police report, investigations indicate that the victim was seated outside a business establishment at Parham Town at East End around 6 p.m. when the shooting occurred. Edwards, who was wounded in the incident, was pronounced dead at the scene. No one else was injured. Well, police say that officers of the major investigation team are appealing to witnesses who could help to identify the assailant or assailants to contact Crime Stoppers anonymously at 800-8477. Alternatively, persons can contact 368-9345. Well, moving on, viewers, where Territorial at Large Representative Honorable Shireen Flats Charles will have another opportunity to submit her application if she intends to run as a Virgin Islands Party candidate in the upcoming election. Well, Flats Charles, who is presently the Junior Minister for Trade and Economic Development, Agriculture and Fisheries did not satisfy the provisions of the VIP Congress Constitution in the application she submitted for the Congress election, which was held last Sunday. The chairman of the VIP and Premier Dr. The Honorable Natalia Wheatley made the announcement to the media, stating that no talks of a replacement for Flat Charles was held at that point. No talk of a replacement as yet. Of course, Congress has to ratify any candidate. So only three uh, were ratified. Of course, when we come back to the special convention, we'll see if any other uh, candidate has, has put themselves forward uh, to be considered. But of course, um, as, as you mentioned, the paperwork has to be filled out properly in accordance with the Virgin Islands Party uh, Constitution. And the paperwork that was submitted did not satisfy um, the provisions of the Constitution. So therefore, we as a, a Virgin Islands Party Congress wanted to ensure we did things according to the book and according to the rules. The Premier was asked why the alleged issue of the application was not addressed during the meeting to have Flash Charles ratif ratified the issue, or rectify the issue, sorry. He said it could have been done, but the time had passed, noting initially that the Honourable Member had to leave the meeting early to attend a family emergency. All nominations uh, have to be received in writing. So, of course, it could have been done in writing. Uh, that could have, have been done. And then we would have to ratify at the convention. Of course, now the convention is over now. So no ratification can take place until another convention. What Premier Wheatley said, a junior minister will have a chance to be ratified at a subsequent special convention, which will be announced soon. It takes a, a while for all of us to become fully 
aware of the provisions of the Constitution. Sometimes, of course, it's important to be reminded about what the provisions of the Constitution are. So, of course, our Secretary has communicated um, to the um, at-large member on what's expected in terms of the correspondence, and we would expect for that to be, um, to be done and that we would be able to, to ratify a fourth candidate at a subsequent uh, special convention. Well, you know, time is moving, so the executive will announce the special convention shortly, and um, she'll be aware of, of wh when she has to submit, resubmit paperwork by. Well, moving on to a separate story, viewers, where during a recent radio interview, Premier Dr. The Honorable Natalia Wheatley was faced with the question of what he believes will happen should the people of the Virgin Islands elect a government or a slate of district representatives, which the United Kingdom is not fond of, and whether or not this will trigger a decision from the mainland to move forward with the order in council. But these questions arise amid active discussions across the territory surrounding concerns that some local politicians do not inspire the confidence of the United Kingdom as it relates to preferred leadership models and behaviours, and whether or not persons facing investigation in relation to the commission of inquiry or should be eligible for candidacy in the upcoming general election. Well, here's what the Premier had to say. It's not the place of the UK to, to choose leaders for the Virgin Islands. That's for the Virgin Islands people to do. Nah, the, Virgin right. Islands, the Virgin Islands people have to choose the leaders that they think are best um, suited to take them forward. But we also have to think very carefully when we elect a leader, whether we want a leader who's going to have an antagonistic and confrontational relationship with our partners, important partners, or whether we want a leadership that's going to engage positively and seek to secure the best interests of the people of the Virgin Islands through those international relationships. And we have signed on to a commitment, and it's a commitment that goes across administrations. We've signed on to the framework for the COI recommendations. And no, I do not think, this is for the United Kingdom to answer, but no, I do not think that if you, if you vote for a, part, a party and they don't like the party, that they'll suspend the Constitution the next day. No, I don't believe that. But I do believe if we waver in our commitments to do what we signed on to, you will risk the suspension of your Constitution. I will say that. Well, in a moment of self-reflection, Wheatley considered his own political journey over the past three years and how he has had to noticeably adjust to better align to the needs of his role and his team. So behind the scenes, of course, during those first three years, you would have lots of intense dis discussions and debates. It doesn't necessarily mean that you always agree, but of course, what happened, happened. Looking back on the three years, of course, I would say again, it takes a big man to say, in this area, I was wrong. True. In this area, I was wrong. In this area, I was wrong. And if you're going in the wrong di direction when it comes to a particular area, it's, a, it's in your best interest to do a U-turn. It doesn't mean that everything that happened before was bad. Let's say, for instance, the new schools. We made the decision to, to build the new schools during the first three years. It doesn't mean that that was bad. We, we made a decision to do that and he got a solar project for, during our first three years. It doesn't mean that those things were bad. So we, we, we take the good, we leave the bad, we learn from our mistakes. Well, he says that above all, he has understood to take the good, leave the bad, and learn from mistakes. He added that it is now up to the people of the Virgin Islands to decide whether they see the improvement. Of course, the, it, it's up to the people. The people will have the choice. They'll have to going to hold you accountable for that. Or know what? We think that you have improved and you are better leaders because of that. That is in the hands of the people, and that's the democratic process. Well, up next, the BVI Football Association Women's Football Festival coming to Virgin Gorda and Tortola. And Rotary Club Sunrise of Rotown gives back. But these are more stories afterward from our sponsors. Mm. Is that my lunch? Hmm? 
Is that my lunch? Mm -mm. We're like the co-worker that doesn't eat your lunch. I'm John. I'm John. CG Insurance. Good like that. Catch Super Bowl 57 on CCT Live. Sign up today by calling 444-4444. to enjoy life like so many ways to count on popular yeah, eh. Eh, eh. father jesus that learn your long like church souls hmm. all right let me enjoy the rest of it yeah. next customer in line please wait hold on a second Sonny boy, come this Good morning. Good morning, Sonny boy. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay. I'll take care of you. What? No, no man can take care of me. How may I assist you? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top up or what? for the NFL playoffs every weekend with CCT Live. Showing every game on CBS, NBC, ABC, and ESPN, including the Super Bowl. Sign up for CCT Live today. There's no game like this game! Welcome back, viewers. But the BVI Football Association will be hosting a women's football festival on February 11th and 25th on Virgin Gorda and Tortola, respectively. A competitions manager at the BVI Football Association, Dean the Sportsman Greenaway, is in an exclusive interview with Twit4 News on Monday said the festival is all about promoting women's football in the territory. What we are trying to do is to promote women's in football. This festival is not only going to be about activities, but things about nutrition, about health, about communication, not only in game but interacting with the media, conditioning. Kareen King, our farmer sprinter, is going to be speaking to them. So what I would like to see really is football move to the level where you have women organizing activities for women. We've just had several women that have become referees and they are as assistant referees within the men's games. We are, have women who as coaches. So all of this is going to tie in with the redevelopment of women's football. Well, Greenaway also said the festival will be utilized as the foundation to identify the number of women interested in playing football in the territory with a goal to establish a women's league once successful. Coach Cass, that's Cassandra Gregg. She don't like me calling her last name, but Coach Cass. She has a goal of bringing 100 women, 100 girls into football by the end of December this year. Gloria has been bringing, I know, you got to ask her the numbers. They've been bringing down quite a number of people from Virgin Garda every Saturday. And I think her, her list is up to about almost 20. So... We are seeing the start of grassroots women's football. The festival is going to help that. We had a women's meeting on Virgin Garda and a women's meeting on Tortola to garner their interest and in what 
they want to see. So this now is the foundation to identify the number of women that are interested and then we take all their numbers and we are going to look at having a league from there. The festival coordinator for Virgin Gordo, Miss Gloria George Foy, spoke to the vision of the festival. Well, the vision of the festival and of getting women involved, uh, encouraging them to stay, to not just to play the game, but beyond the field. What is there for me in football after I am not able to play anymore or I don't want to play anymore? What else can I do? So that is the main vision. There's something for you to do after you play. You can become a referee, you become an official, you can become a sports um, individual just like you see the sportsman around all the time. Then he's not going to be here forever. Why not have a woman there taking these photos and getting them out there? So it's just to get the women, you know, right now uh, in football, the women we don't see as much. You know, people don't see anything going on with women. So we want to change that. We want to let people know we are still here and we are growing. And this is, we're using those who are already here to encourage others to come into the game. Well, meanwhile, Women's Football Committee Chair, Ms. Makeda Foy, said she is happy to have such an event taking place in the territory. She said it will help to educate women on the many benefits of football, especially the health benefits that it has to offer. I'm especially excited about the health aspect because a lot of what discourages not just women but men as well from playing football is because their health and the conditioning levels personally for myself because you know we get so busy we get so caught up with our personal lives so, and when we get out here we're not able to keep in shape you know keep up with the sport itself so I'm excited about that particularly um, it's not I mean it's my first role as a chairman as a president but I have been captain for our team Avengers several times so I'm looking forward to this step up I would say and I'm excited about having some of my past teammates Shadney Watley and Sophia Flax on board with me and uh, we're just excited about everything because we have been crying to get women's football to another level so I'm really looking forward to that. Now moving to our next story, Raider Reward Rotary Club Sunrise of Rotom held a recent community initiative where residents of the Adena Donovan home benefited. For more on this story. The Rotary Club Sunrise of Road Town was busy this week giving back to the community. They donated much needed branded blankets to the residents of the Adena Donovan home and made a courtesy visit to assess any further support the management of the facility needed to provide the best care to seniors of the Virgin Islands. Rotary Club Sunrise was also instrumental in donating a top of the line smart board to the rehabilitation center of His Majesty Prison at Balsam Gut. The smart board with its many features will be able to provide additional resources for teaching and training of the inmates as they prepare to return to their communities. His Majesty Prison currently has a partnership with the H. Lavity Stout Community College offering inmates small business management and life skills courses. The hope is that the facility would be able to attract trainers regionally and internationally using virtual features to expand the learning possibilities for the inmates. The official handover was made to the superintendent of the prison, Mr. Guy Hill, and the restorative justice officer, Mr. Walter Barrett, alongside the rehabilitation coordinator, Jermaine Freeman, at the prison this past Saturday. On behalf of the Rotary Club Sunrise of Rotown, we are very happy to be contributing to the prison's reform program for the inmates. Mr. Barrett was invited to speak at our club a couple months ago. And when we heard the story and the information he shared with us, it really touched us that morning. And so our members got um, very interested and so we had some personal people that contributed to making this happen this morning. And they're here with us. Um, we have Eureka Medical represented by PP Jean. We have our immediate past president, Gretchen Penhard. We also have our past president and vice president, uh, Rosemary Flax, and our director, one of our directors with us this morning of admin, Judy Smith. 
And so we're missing uh, another couple, but then the club decided to match the contribution and that's how we came up with the finances to contribute this very important piece of equipment to your reform program, the Smart Board. And so on behalf, again, as uh, president of the club, I'd like to officially hand it over to you and hope and look forward to the reformation that's going to be happening with the inmates as you prepare them to come back into the community. Well, thank you very much for this generous, generous donation. Uh, Mr. Barrett spoke to me about this some time back and his input along with encouragement from Ms. Freeman, who is the director of rehab. And we welcome this gesture because it's important for us to try to reconnect the inmate back to society and prepare them to return to, to society with discipline. They discipline them in the classroom where they pay attention to details and they continue to strive and be the best that they could be. Because we're going to be here for them as long as we're here. And it's our job to reform, try to get them to change their minds, change their ways. It's a challenge, but I think we could do it. And with the help and input from clubs like Rotary and others in the community, other stakeholders, we welcome this new addition to the school of uh, His Majesty's Prison. Thank you. What this is going to do for us, uh, as we said before, um, in terms of getting more programs for the inmates for rehabilitation, so we've partnered with HLSCC. And we have two college courses that are going to be offered to our inmates, um, life skills and small business development. So these are tools that would help inmates in terms of their reintegration to ensure that when they go back out into the community, they have some tools and some skills to help um, reduce the possibility of recidivism. And there are other things, obviously, that will be done um, with this. We have some partners in Virgin Gorda who are going to be teaching agriculture and hydroponics. So um, on one day of the week, they will actually physically be up here, and the other day they will do it via Zoom. So there are so many things, so many possibilities open with this now. More classes, more programs, and that spells, um, of course, a boost in our rehabilitation. So thank you very much. This initiative under the leadership of current President Alicia Green is intended to be a valuable contribution meeting various needs of the community. President Green said, and I quote, It is indeed an honor to contribute and invest in the reform program for our men. We are looking forward to receiving a report on the impact of this contribution by the program director. While Rotary builds communities, a vital part of the community is its people, and this is a great start to reforming our men to continue to build stronger communities. Communities. Reporting for 284 News, Ron Grant. Well, up next, Turkey, Syria, earthquakes, 5,000 plus dead, and a look at police brutality in the United States. With these stories, when 284 News return. for the NFL playoffs every weekend at CCT Live, showing every game on CBS, NBC, ABC, and ESPN, including the Super Bowl. Sign up for CCT Live today. There's no game like this game! Hun, it's asking for your password. Huh? You were logged out. I need the password. Uh, uh, B-R... What's the rest? Um, B-R... A N D I, the number four, E V E R? Who's Brandy? We're like the password that isn't your ex girlfriend's name. CG Insurance. Good like that. I should have changed it. You should have. You're, you're right. Catch Super Bowl 57 on CCT Live. Sign up today by calling 444 4444. Father Jesus, that learn you along like church service. Hmm. Alright, let me enjoy the rest of it. Next 
customer in line, please? Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny boy, come yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny boy. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay. I'll take care of it. What? No, no man can take care of me. How may I assist you? Yes. You want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Huh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You want top of power? Welcome back, viewers, and thank you so much for sticking with us. Well, two massive earthquakes wreaked havoc in southeastern Turkey and Syria on Monday, leaving over 5,000 confirmed dead and thousands of others facing severe injuries, homelessness, and other adversities following the techno tectonic event. Uh, more in this report. The first earthquake struck early Monday morning, about 4.17 a.m., and registered a striking 7.8 on the Richter scale at a depth of 11 miles underground. Reports from survivors are that the violent shaking lasted two minutes before dying down. Seismologists say this was one of the strongest earthquakes to hit Turkey in recorded history. The second massive earthquake hit 12 hours later, from an epicenter slightly north of the first. This earthquake registered 7.5 on the Richter scale. Turkey's Disaster and Emergency Management Authority has since confirmed that the two incidents were independent of each other, clarifying that the second earthquake was not an aftershock of the first, although there have been many aftershocks felt. As rescuers brave freezing temperatures to comb through rubble and snow in search of survivors and bodies, the World Health Organization WHO, predicts that the death toll from the events is likely to increase as much as eight times the current amount. To that end, WHO's Senior Emergency Officer for Europe, Catherine Smallwood, told AFP News, quote, We always see the same thing with earthquakes, unfortunately, which is the initial reports of numbers of people who have died or who have been injured will increase quite significantly in the week that follows. Smallwood also noted that outdoor conditions in the affected area adds to the dangers as many people are without shelter. Many of the Syria-based victims are believed to be refugees who lived in camps on both sides of the border with Turkey. Infrastructure on both sides of the border has also taken a significant blow, with several buildings failing to hold up to the force of the earthquakes. Massive structures, some up to 12 stories high, were reduced to rubble in a matter of minutes. Among buildings destroyed were a historic castle which stood for more than 2,200 years. As the scale of the disaster becomes more apparent, Turkey has declared a state of emergency. For 284 News, I am Jacques Wooding. All across the United States, black men continue to be the victims of police brutality. And most recently, Tyre Nichols was beaten to death by five black officers in Memphis. He was stopped for an apparent reckless driving just three miles from his home. Originally, 284's Ron Grant sat down with Jasper Hendricks III, President and CEO of the Black Legislative Leaders Network, who currently serves as a member and vice chair of the Metropolitan Nashville Fair Board of Commissioners. Well, Jasper spoke about the death of Nicholas and the way forward. I do believe there's still a long road ahead of us as uh, Black Americans uh, in the pursuit of uh, justice and equality. Um, it is sad to say that it has taken this long um, for people to, certain people, to wanting to have this conversation. Uh, what we need um, is for our Congress to act, number one, uh, in implementing certain types of legislation, um, and uh, in particular, getting rid of um, qualified immunity uh, for police officers who um, do engage in this type of behavior. Um, and and I would actually hate to add uh, another incident happened um, just uh, two nights ago here in Nashville, where a 47 year old black man uh, was shot uh, in the middle of the street here uh, um, in um, just in downtown Nashville by the police. 
Um, there was no effort to de-escalate the situation. You can tell um, from watching the footage that this person was going through some type of mental health crisis, um, and um, but was was unfortunately shot that you know shot, shot. I mean, it fifteen bullets. Well, additionally, he encouraged Black Caribbean students living in the United States to be on the alert. Of viewers for the full interview, visit all two eight four media platforms. Well, that's it for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com and like us on Facebook at 284media and 284BVI on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Kamal Haynes and I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. Bye-bye. Yo, everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat. I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch you when I reach home. What do you mean? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home. Keeping out that trouble me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live. Bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. You know I hust. I watch him bar. I even watch him football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. So I can see how you look and go from there, but.